Uh, I had the opportunity to view the film already and what a fantastic film. Um, I was saying to both Catherine and Kyle earlier today, when I first read the synopsis of it, you know, it's kind of like a groundhog day with the time loop and everything. And, you know, I was a little skeptical going into it, but the whole take on it is really interesting and exciting at the same time. What made you want to board this film? Yeah, I sort of had the same reaction you did where I, you know, we've all seen so many time loop movies before it's become its own genre. And... I never imagined that I would uh, make another time of movie, except when I read Love's script, there's there's such a, a reason for this being a time loop movie in that the, the emotional state of the characters also reflect the feeling of what a time loop is. And so thinking of it more as a character journey, I thought it was such a beautiful take on a time loop. You know, we've all felt a sense of heartbreak that, you know, a feeling of being stuck, um, not wanting to move forward in life, but also wanting to move forward in life. Um, and also being a teenager and uh, not knowing what your future is going to bring you, feeling like you're stuck in a cycle there. So there were a lot of really beautiful um, reflections of the idea of the time loop in the character journeys that I thought was so exciting. How did you land on uh, Catherine and Kyle joining the cast? Yeah, the, you know, casting has such a huge impact on the movie. And um, I, they both brought a, a, a fresh sensibility that I, that, you know, uh, was exciting to me. Kyle's so physical and I knew he could pull off some of the more choreographed sequences that we had to shoot pretty quickly. Um, and he also has this own charming original sensibility and sense of humor that really made, I think, Mark kind of have an edge and an interesting, mm -hmm. um, you know, appeal. And Catherine's just sunshine when I met her. I think the character of Margaret risked being a little gloomy and, when I met Catherine, I knew just the likability factor is off the charts and she would carry that character to some place that really resonated with people. Uh, well, I think you noted on something that kind of interests me is uh, how choreographed all the scenes had to be, especially at the very beginning of the movie where we see Mark, you know, catching the, the uh, glasses is falling off the table and throwing the stuff, like flipping the stuff with the tongs. How do you, do that so many those takes so many times and keep it so fresh each time well to be honest we didn't have that many takes so it's part of it because we, we 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 shot this movie so quickly and you know that that one or through the town at the opening i think that was only six takes you're kidding we, i mean we had a lot of we had we had a lot of prep for it and um some rehearsal time, but we, it, it's a testament to what Kyle could bring to the movie that made all of that work. Kyle and I rehearsed the week before we started shooting some of those more choreographed sequences. Um, so he had a little bit of a, of a shorthand for what was gonna come. And then um, he's just so good that when we started rolling, it, you know, he basically hit it every time. Um, That's insane. but it's only because it's Kyle. I mean, we, if we cast somebody else, I don't know what we, what would have happened there. We would have had to make, have a plan B, I think. Well, I mean, did you have a plan B or were you just kind of hoping with Kyle? <laughs> we're just going to wing it. If he gets it, he gets it. Yeah. You can't really have a plan B. Otherwise you're going to go <laughs> with plan B. I, I think what I would have ended up doing is it wouldn't have been a one -er if we couldn't. I mean, it, that was, that was a little bit that was an ambitious idea and part of it to me i thought when you have a um because it was a time loop you were, i really wanted to sell the idea that everything was really happening in sequence immediately and the moment you cut you, you sort of like are are creating an artificial um um rhythm to to a sequence. And so I, I thought, well, if we could just pull this off in like a video game, you know, he's 
going from the start of the level to the end of the level and he knows mm-hmm. all where all the points are and he's got to hit all the points so you don't see it cut you just see him get all the points swing his tongs into the trash can and he beat the level and he's you know he wins so i wanted that to be the experience of it which is was why we there did anything it. while filming that you thought you know you had to be in there as you went through the progression of this or had to be left out of it that you originally wanted in there um what did i i mean i think that we did when we went to fair, to alabama to shoot we did have to do some script work to um, make the movie fit within the scope of what we could achieve there. And part of that was just based on locations and part of that's also time and Mm -hmm. um, what we had the budget for. So there were more sequences that were, that played into the wish fulfillment of the time loop that I would have loved to have shot Mm -hmm. of Kyle just playing around doing different, we had all these gags that we came up with. Um, but we had, we pared it down to, I think what we, what we could achieve and what was essential for the movie. Uh, but I mean, look, the whole script was so great. I, I wanted mm-hmm. to, that was maybe what was heartbreaking is that we, we had to scale it back a little bit. Cause I, I just, I wanted to shoot it all. How did you guys end up in a fair hope? Cause I think it's an awesome town and it seems to be, you know, being filmed in a lot. So how did you guys end up down there? It was recommended by one of the producers, Aaron Ryder, um, who um, brought me there and it just um, sort of creatively checked all the boxes. um, And I think it made sense logistically for the production to shoot there. Um, And there was a little bit of an infrastructure there already, because as you said, some films had shot there before. so I think that the, the big appeal there was that the town was willing to really let us take over. So there's a whole day where we basically shut off the downtown and mm-hmm. they were, they let us use it almost like a back lot for that time, oh, which wow. was great. Because the script was originally set to be, take place in Lexington, Massachusetts, but there's no way we mm-hmm. could have taken over, I don't think, with with our budget anyway, the the take over the downtown of Lexington. So we were pretty fortunate. If, do you think if you had shot in Lexington, it would have changed something about the movie? Well, everything adds up. It would have had a, a little bit of a different um, aesthetic vibe. I grew up in Massachusetts, so that's mm-hmm. my world. Um, and I think that Fair Hope, there is, I, we, we tried to avoid as much as possible anything that would, um, stamp the movie with a location so if there Mm -hmm. was some sort of southern french sort of new orleans style architecture and we avoided shooting that i wanted the movie to feel timeless like it it could take place now it could have taken place 20 years ago and i wanted it to feel like it could take place in any town um in the u.s which you know when you look at the john hughes movies those were they're in chicago but they I always felt like it was my town. So I wanted that vibe to carry through here. Well, I think it carries through perfectly because at no point do you realize that, you know, you're in specifically Alabama. You feel like you're, it's happening right outside of your door. Um, So A plus on that. Um, The other thing I was really interested in was um, the the added layer of the twist with um, Margaret's mother. Uh, that whole thing, because I didn't see, you know, you can kind of see a foreshadowing. You guys did an extremely good job of dropping little hints in there, but then you come to find out that it's actually her mother and all of that. And um, were those hints planned or was that something that, you know, you added more to it as you went on? They were always there in the script. Um, I think yeah, I'm sort of careful of not giving too much away, keeping the mystery alive, but also planting the seed that there is more to the story. Um, but Lev is such a great, he's such a smart writer. It's everything. There were so many more details in the script that were just too nuanced to get on film even, but there, 
everything is um, that he writes is uh, so intentional. And that was part of the pleasure of, of reading that script. What about this movie made, had you the most excited? Was there a certain scene shooting it that you were just, you know, just got you just so excited or, you know, working with certain characters? I was so excited about the, the magical aspect of the movie and being able to shoot, you know, like the scene in the, in the gym when the mo he builds this moon room. So these surreal moments. Um, uh, yeah, with, with Kyle also just anticipating the world around him as he, as he you know, moves through, through the town or the eagle catching the fish, all these moments that were a little bit heightened think were really exciting to me. I have a, a battle within myself always where I'm so drawn to uh, a real earnest performance and naturalism and a want for an emotional authenticity always. But at the same time, the reason I love movies is because I love magic. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to find um, a balance between the two. Um, and I think this movie was exciting to me because it had that opportunity. What was the most challenging part of making this film? I, I mean, this, there were challenging sequences and definitely those one were stressful uh, to pull off. Um, and so in terms of shooting, I would say those were the most challenging aspects of the movie to, to plan, to choreograph, to get the camera on the right uh, dance with the actors. Um, and of course, getting all the timing to line up. Um, but on a macro level, just the, the um, intensity of our shooting schedule was so challenging. We were moving so fast through this and uh, it was a constant, it was constantly, we were on our toes just to, to uh, to uh, to shoot all the the sequences and we were even shut, this was also um, last March so we were shut down early because of COVID so we lost a couple of days and we, we at the very end we were just racing through a weekend to shoot as much as we could to get as much of the story as we could uh, so it, it was the, just the um, the breakneck sort of intensity of the of the production was was exciting but it was very challenging too. What do you hope fans get from this movie? This is going to sound maybe a little trite, but there's just so much negativity in the world right now in politics and in internet interactions. And I really hope that people... This, take a minute to just reflect on all the tiny perfect things that are around us all the time, you know, and look to, you know, in terms of Mark's journey, he's, he needs to stop and ask somebody else the question like, are you okay? Or what's going on with you? And if everybody would do a little bit more of that, I think, especially today, given this, dramatic year we've lived through and isn't stopping you know if everybody would take a little bit of that to heart I think um obviously would um be a great thing and, and I hope that this movie inspires a little piece of that